We're with head coach Bradley Del Pivato. The Demons are open this week, do not play Saturday, as they try to regroup after a very bitter loss at Southeastern. Southeastern remains the only undefeated team in Southland Conference play. Coach Pee, before we look ahead, let's look back, and I know it's a painful thing to do because uh, there are many ways the Demons could have prevailed on Saturday. Talk about the frustration overall and not particularly the uh, many reasons why uh, we were that close to winning, but talk about the frustration that you as coaches and the players this team have to deal with right now. Well, you know, it's always frustrating to, to lose the, uh, the game before open week because in football, when you're open, it's two weeks. I mean, you live with that for two weeks. But we have a lot to learn from it. You know, uh, if you go back and you look at the tape, we had several opportunities to uh, make plays to win the game and we didn't do it. So when, when, when it plays out that way, you don't make the place to win the game, the other team does, and you tip your hat and say congratulations, Southeastern, and uh, you go back to work and uh, make sure that that doesn't happen again. You make plays to win the game, and that's what we have to do to win. Um, when you look at that game, there were several different turning points. You how as coaches do you address that? I mean, you'll go back and review those. And, uh, how, do you, how do you point out to your team, this is what we've got to do to get over the hump and win these games? Well, it, like I've said, it comes down to making plays. When you have a chance to make a play, you know, uh, there were several times, I mean, we literally had them in the backfield for negative plays and don't make plays. And uh, that there are several times offensively we, we, we had a – chance to make plays we don't make plays and same way on special teams you know in order to win games you got to make plays and we're very close I, I think we're playing extremely hard and doing a lot of good things but you know uh, we, we just shoot ourselves in the foot at the wrong time and it's costly I mean you got to make plays to win football games that's what we have to do you've got two weeks now before the next game um, are there things that you change during those two weeks to to maybe fit better to what this team can do? Are there, or is it simply just emphasizing, do your job, be the player that you can be, and we can win every one of these four games? Well, I mean, the, the thing about it, uh, you know, we're still in good shape, you know, because of the nature of McNeese having two losses now, and the fact that everybody but Southeastern has a loss, and everybody that has a loss, we still play. So, in, in, in a weird way, we're in great shape with two losses. And, uh, you know, we just have to take them one at a time. The only one we're worried about right now is Nickel State. And, uh, you know, we, we have to go out and play a good game. They're a much improved football team. Uh, you know, if you watch them uh, in the first half against UCA, it scared you to death offensively. I mean, almost 300 total yards in one half. And, that running and throwing. So this is a much improved team. Uh, it starts there, and we got to go win the game. We win it here at home, and then we'll worry about the next one. But uh, you know, we we have four games left, and you know, what we have to look at is that, is to win out. Win out, you got to win the next one. The next one's Nickel State. Now that may answer my next question. During open date week, do you spend time preparing for nickels and? I would say perhaps you already have by the previous answer. You've already maybe looked at some game film. We'll, we'll do both. We'll get a lot of work against each other. We'll get some nickel prep, and, you know, it's a good week to catch our breath. We'll reduce practice uh, to do that. You know, we played seven tough games. Uh, two of them were very long road trips. You know, uh, we have to get fresh. We've got to get healed. But we have to practice, too. So uh, there's just a fine line. But we'll have work days Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, take a nice weekend off so our players can go home and, and, and relax. And then we'll come back, have a Monday night practice, which we normally don't do, and then have a normal Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, be ready to play. All right, you mentioned uh, healing up. Uh, you wound up the game Saturday without three of your starting offensive linemen, and perhaps uh, most critically without the nation's 10th best all-purpose yardage producer in Philip Harvey. Uh, what's the status on those injuries? You know what? Uh, have not met with the trainer yet. Uh, he was in meetings, and uh, I'll find that out later today, and then we'll we'll keep our fans posted. But uh, you know, hopefully we're going to have them back. But like I said, uh, you know, it's uh, the jury's still out on on that right now. Okay, and you had a very simple explanation after the game Saturday as far as your view on injuries, and that is somebody else got to step up and play. It's football. <laughs> when somebody gets hurt, the next guy in line, next man in. As we like to say, the next man in has got to step up and play, and that's what's got to happen. You know, I mean, we got, 
you know, uh, a big football team, 115 guys out there. Somebody else has got to take up the slack, and that's what we'll do. Okay, let's say that uh, one of those injuries or more might be a situation where uh, you've got to look down the ladder a little bit. Uh, seven games into the season, uh, would you pull a red shirt off a freshman? Oh, sure, sure. Got to. We'll do what we have to do to win football games right now. If that's put a red shirt, then a guy's got to be unselfish. He's got to take it off and go play, and uh, that's that's what we do. You know, when a guy that did that, that, that we all know real well, was Brad Laird. You know, uh, his red shirt freshman year with four games left, took his off and uh, finished the year, and he ended up going down in history as the all-time pass leader and, and one of the top 100 players, uh, you know, at Northwestern State. So, you know, if that's what we have to do, we have to do what's best for the team. Where was senior safety Cortez Page? Uh, the Demons uh, football team has an open date week this week after a tough loss at Southeastern on Saturday. Cortez, first let's talk about that game at Southeastern. Um, the Demon defense uh, had some struggles in the first half and then uh, stepped it up in the second half, but uh, ultimately we weren't able to do enough good things to uh, win the game. Tell me about uh, what shaped the outcome of Saturday's game. Uh, first of all, we didn't make enough plays. You know, uh, we prepared and, you know, Saturday was a test for us. You know, we uh, had to review all, du all during the week. And when it came time to take a test, we didn't, we didn't uh, make enough plays. They made the plays they needed to make to win the game. Okay, defensively, uh, how do you assess the defense's performance now through seven games with four left? I feel that, uh, you know, uh, we played together as a defense, but uh, you know, so sometimes individual individual jobs, you know, don't hold up sometimes, you know, and I feel to be a great defense, you have to be consistent game after game, snap after snap, doing your job. Okay, you guys have two weeks before your next game. How can you reach that goal that you talk about of, of individual consistency to produce uh, uh, defensive team uh, success? Just pure focus. You know, uh, we've, we, we, we've been given answers, you know, to the test. We know what our opponent is going to do. We know what they're going to hit us with. We just have to show up and, you know, execute the plays when they're in front of us, when we have the opportunity to do so. All right, you have four games remaining. Uh, there are those that say, well, hey, you, you can't get it done in those four games. What do you say to that thought? I say, you know, we, as a team, we believe in each other and we know what we're capable of doing. We know what, you know, we can, what we can achieve if we just put our minds together and just go for it. Okay, individually, you've got three interceptions. You've been among the national leaders. Uh, talk about uh, your early season success individually. It's just, it just goes back to, you know, believing in my coaches you know, believing what they tell me to do, being where they tell me to be. You know, I just, I, I study film, you know, like, like most of the team does. Any player that wants to be, bet, be better at the game and what they do, I study. And I just, when opportunities present itself to me, I try to make the best of it. Because you never know when, uh, when the ball's gonna come back your way. All right, last question. Uh, you guys have a practice week but you have an open weekend. What are you going to do with your open weekend? Get better. We're with senior defensive end Wade Williams, uh, one of the team leaders uh, who is uh, looking forward to uh, getting things going in a positive direction with the Demons starting today and heading into homecoming next weekend as the Demons have an open date after a frustrating loss at Southeastern Wade. Let's talk about uh, that outcome at Hammond on Saturday. Uh, what were the contributing factors to pushing Southeastern over us and, uh, on Saturday in Hammond? Well, uh, you know, credit goes to Southeastern. They had a great, they played a great game. They came up with a great game plan. Uh, we had a great game plan as well, but they executed uh, extremely well. They're a very disciplined team. Uh, they play with a lot of class, and they did. Uh, you know, I wish them the best they did well. I, I don't, you know, hope that they win every game from now on out for our sake, but I do wish them, uh, uh, you know, they've had a, a good season. I wish them, uh, wish them well. Okay. What did the Demons need to do better to win the game on Saturday? I think we've got to create more turnovers. Uh, that's from my perspective on the defensive side of the ball. 
we've got to give uh, our offense the ball as many times as we can. And that gives them, you know, obviously more opportunities to score. Uh, we have to create more turnovers. We've got to be better, you know, in all three phases. Uh, our head coach, uh, Coach Peeve, has stressed that. You know, we've got to be better at offense, defense, and special teams. But from my perspective, I think the defense, uh, we've learned a lot from this game. We've got to learn uh, from our mistakes that we made this game. We've got to create more turnovers. Okay. Uh, two conference losses. Uh, how demoralizing uh, is it to be in that situation, or is it a situation where you feel like it's still manageable? Well, I, I do play for Northwestern State. Uh, this is not a peewee football team, and I don't say that to be rude, but um, we have a lot of pride here. And uh, I played on a team uh, two years ago. We were 0-11 and uh, the situation was a lot worse than it is now. And we played every game. I mean, we suited up and we went out and we played our best and we lost over and over and over again. But every game we came out and played. Uh, before I did this interview, I just got done running sprints. I just got done working out. Uh, there were guys there who, who worked their butt off just like they have all year. And I think you know, that's really the answer to that question. You don't, uh, you don't shy away. That's not the kind of the men we are, not what this uh, university represents. You know, I think that's a credit to our head coach. You know, he's the kind of guy that instills that kind of discipline and uh, that kind of um, stubbornness, you know, in the right way that uh, we, don't, we don't bow down when things are tough. You know, we, we have a saying, and it's make hard times good times. We're doing that right now. Okay. If you look at the last four games, if you guys are able to go through and win all of them or even three of the four, you might very well still be somewhere in the mix and have a very, very good season. Yes, sir. Uh, because you're playing the teams that uh, are high up in the conference standings. So do you still look at it as an opportunity? Do you allow yourself to still think conference race, or do you just think let's win the next one and go forward? Well, I think we all, you know, we hope for the conference race in the back of our minds. That's not, you know, excuse me, it's not unreasonable to think of. Uh, I mentioned, you know, kind of past seasons we've had. Uh, the first year I started was uh, 2010, and we were playing at the end of the year to be uh, – uh, three split the conference championship with three different teams with two losses. So you know that can be done and in this kind of conference I mean you know what in the rating said Southeastern was going to be as good as they were this year. You just don't know what's going to happen week to week in this conference. I think Southeastern's a great team uh, but there are other teams in this conference that are that are very good. Now Southeastern can beat those teams without a doubt but those teams can beat Southeastern and like I said I wish them the best of luck but for our sake we hope you know that they ultimately lose. So um, in regards to conference, I think, you know, we, we still have a, there's still light at the end of that tunnel. Now, it could be shut off, you know, it, it could really, really quick, you know, Southeastern can, they have control of their own fate, and if they take control of their fate, you know, hats off to them. Uh, we hope that doesn't happen, as I said, but if it does, uh, to answer your other question, you know, you do play game to game, every single game. Uh, it's my last year of football. I don't, uh, I don't pretend that I'm going to be, you know, uh, an MVP in the NFL, you know, and I, I joke about that some off and on, but seriously, I mean, realistically, uh, the percentages aren't real, real high. And that's not a, you know, I, I'm not embarrassed to say that. That being said, um, it's my last year of football. Love the game of football. And uh, every single play, um, you know, I feel like myself and my teammates will play and, you know, really uh, love those moments. And just being a demon for these last few weeks, whether it be um, the next couple weeks or going into playoffs in a couple weeks. Okay. Um away from football, uh, people really enjoyed your appearance on the Monday Minute a couple Thank weeks you. ago. Now you are uh, without beard. Explain that one. I am. Uh, <clears throat> you kind of caught me off guard there. Um, just decided to cut it off. Uh, that's really it for that, I guess. All right. It's too gonna, off guard. You gonna <laughs> stay uh, uh, clean shaven for the time being? I might, you know, it's just kind of, you know, when I had the beard, it wasn't really a, a required for the time being. It was just, you know, whenever I wanted to cut it off, just cut it off. So I finally just took care of it. For the one time during the season, you have a Saturday off. What are you going to do with it? Well, uh, I think a lot of our players, you know, we, we make reference to just getting better. I think uh, you can kind of see that with our team, and that can be done a number of ways. So I'll spend most of the weekend with my wife, just kind of relaxing, reflecting of, uh, you know, everything's going on, preparation for the next week. You know, I, I, I tend on just, just taking care of my body, letting it, you know, just kind of heal up and take the week off. That's what open week's for, and I think uh, is be, be the right thing to do is just take advantage of that and prepare for Nichols the week after. Will there be a lot of honeydews? Oh, to do around the house? Uh, no, I think we may, we may actually get out of town this week and uh, go spend it somewhere else. So uh, just trying to avoid as many honeydews as possible. Very good. Thank you, Wade. Thank you.